way like Ooh, yeah, way up in the skies like Living my time is tryna get my life right My God never fails, so I'ma hear another tale Living for the king of kings, what you think this is? Got me like There is no limit to what I can accomplish. I'm powerful. I'm bold. bold. Purpose-driven. I'm fearless. I, I am a woman. I am a woman. I am a woman. Good evening, family, and welcome back to another night of Hill City Online. This evening is my privilege and honor to greet our Apostle of the House, Apostle Vincent and Virginia Roder, our youth pastor, Pastor Clayton and Cindy Rose, as well as our youth leader, Richard and Monique Blau. To all our viewers and special guests, I greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Um, we trust that you have enjoyed each and every service with us thus far and that you are ready and fired up for tonight's service. Don't forget to tag a friend, start a watch party or follow us. To all our beautiful women out there, I uh, trust that you had a fabulous Women's Month thus far. Allow me just to um, read to you a short quote shared by Serena Williams and it reads as follows. The success of every woman should be the inspiration to another. We should raise each other up, make sure you are courageous, be strong and extremely kind. But above all, be humble. God bless. You still believe in God for something big in 2020. You might as well shout. Shout. I need you to turn your volume up. If you know you serve a big God, somebody just say it with me. God is a big God.
Please join me in prayer. Father God, I come tonight before your throne of grace, mighty God. I want to say thank you for your love, thank you for your grace, thank you for your mercy bestowed upon us, Father God. Lord my God, I bring the women of South Africa and the rest around of the world before you, Father God. I ask for your hands of protection upon us, Father God, from the crowns of our head to the soles of our feet, mighty God. Lord my God, I pray for the armor of God around us, Father God, and that you bless us, Father God, and protect us in whatever we do and wherever we go, Father God. Lord my God, I pray for everyone in this difficult time, Father God, that they will stay rooted in you, Father God, that they will cling on to your word, mighty God. Lord my God, I pray for your protection, Father God, I pray for your wisdom, and I pray for your understanding, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I need hand lifted all over the room. From Detroit to California. God's gonna open. God's gonna open the windows of heaven. Pour me out a blessing. Won't be wrong to contain it. Won't even try to explain it. Well, it's gonna be big. God is about to blow my mind. One last time, prop us out to yourself. You know something big is coming. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to type what you're believing God for in the comments. Come on, right there. You believe in God for promotion? I dare you to type it. You believe in God for your children saved? I de declare you to type it. I want you to realize that no weapon formed against you is able to prosper. Oh God, I want you to declare these words out of your mouth. I let it go name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's an honor and a great privilege to be able to bring forth a word of encouragement on this Sunday evening I'd like to greet my apostles Vincent and Virginia Roda as well as my youth pastors um, Pastor Clayton and Cindy Rose thank you for allowing me to bring forth a word of encouragement and I would like to say a happy Women's Month to all women celebrating um, I will be reading out of the book of Proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10 which states honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your bonds will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine the title of my short encouragement is the power of tithing now with tithing it's one of many ways in which we are able to demonstrate our gratitude and how thankful we are towards God. It's a, it's a way of honoring God in good times and bad times. And in good times, it also reminds us of our dependence on God as well as in bad times. But I think in good times, we are able to express our honor and gratitude towards Him. And in bad times, we are able to show Him that we are trusting Him with the very little that we have, that He may multiply it. And fulfill every heart's desire and need that we have and as you all know that i am a university student a full-time university student as well as a small business owner <clears throat> and in the light of everything that is currently going on in the world such as this coronavirus pandemic it has been tough on many people they have lost their jobs their jobs their lives family members and as well as their houses and it's it's sad to see but regardless of everything, I'd like to encourage in some somebody that with a, with a little that you have, give it unto God and tithe faithfully because He will supply every single need that you have. If I look at my business, it's slowly but surely expanding. My car, the bills are being paid every month. And with the very loss that I have, I give unto Him because I know that He will supply every single need that I have. And according to his word that he may do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think of, he will surely do it for you too. And if he could supply your needs last month, if he could provide for you last month, he surely will do so again this month and the months to come. Um, and don't fret about anything. Remain faithful in your tithing. Remain faithful in your prayer walk with God, with remain faithful in your spiritual walk with God and and remember be reminded of the fact that despite this pandemic going on um God's plans are not on hold for your life 
it's just about to get started so with that being said be blessed be encouraged by what i have had to say and be safe beloveds for he's a god that will fulfill and supply every single need that you have amen ready for the word this evening so i would like to take the opportunity to greet my apostles vincent and virginia roder as well as my husband pastor clayton rose and all the viewers tuned in today tonight it is my esteemed honor to introduce our speaker she is married to apostle vincent roder and is the mother to lance and jamie roder she's a beautiful woman of god with the biggest heart she's a woman with a plan and always on a mission Taking Jesus to the world and seeing the lives of women uplifted and restored is her passion. She is family oriented and she's a worshipper at heart. I have personally witnessed her caring and praying for people, sowing financial seeds and serving God's people. She is always sensitive to the Holy Spirit and always moves on his command. She's a mentor, a counselor, a sister and a friend. But most of all, she's my spiritual mom. 
She's always checking in on me. She's always sending me love. She's always counseling and guiding me. And I know tonight that she is going to minister straight to your heart. So go on, Mom. Preach. So I present to you tonight my spiritual mom, Apostle Virginia Roda. Good day to you, Hill City Youth. Good day to you, Pastor Cindy and Clayton Rose. I'm very thankful for this opportunity that you have afforded me to spend some wonderful time with you. I want to read the Word of God to you in Psalm 139, verse 14, which says, I praise you for the mysterious and wonderful way, the great and surprising way that you have made me, O God. I know very well that everything that you made is wonderful. For those that are listening or have just tuned in now, um, let me read the word of God again. Psalm 139 verse 14. Especially to the woman, to the girls, it's Women's Month. It's nearly done, but we are having a great time, aren't we? I praise you for the mysterious and wonderful way, great and surprising, that you um, made me. I know very well that everything that you made is wonderful. Now, I'm sure you can agree with me that there are times that we don't feel this way. We don't feel happy. We don't feel glad that we have been made by the Lord, especially when it's tough times in our lives or even when we are sad and we find ourselves in a very, very dark place. And the least of the scriptures or the word that we think about is this psalm in Psalm 139. But then, as we come before the Lord, He lifts us up again. And we get back on track, back onto the wagon. And we find ourselves reading the Word of God. And then we find ourselves in the secret place. And then we find ourselves happy. I want you to say, put your hand on your, on your breast and say with me, I am a woman. I have a name. My life matters. Can we do it again? Let's do it again. I am a woman. I have a name. My life matters. There we go. I'm sure you feel great, hey? Somebody didn't tell you that today, but you told it to yourself. And in the atmosphere, you declared it. What you confess you possess hallelujah let's journey further let me tell you a little bit about my journey so i was born to two parents and the one was from uppington and the other one was from cape town god put them together and there was me i am first born and i was very loved because i was a love child through the grace of God. My parents didn't like going to church at all. They were Anglican, so they said. I remember going a few times. Um, most of us, we remember the smell of the incense. Either it's not nice or it's nice for you to this day. But I thank God for those times that we did go. Now, my, our, our extended family, they, um, they were saved. Thank you, Jesus. And so my parents, they always allowed me to go. Somehow, as a little girl, I could go with my uncles and my aunts. And so my life's journey started um, being in the Sunday school. And it was wonderful because I started in the Brethren Church, where the woman didn't speak much, uh, but the men did. But, but the kids were free to be kids. And so I found out, or my family found out, that I could sing a bit. And um, hallelujah, I was put on the stage and I started to sing at different places. Um, the I Steadfords or 
the anniversaries as you call it and it was a highlight of my life because we got to dress up and we got brown packets of sweets and lovely things afterwards I was a happy little girl and um, my parents still didn't go to church much my life journeyed on I then went to the youth in the brethren and there I started hearing about Virginia you need to give your life to the Lord when are you gonna come and meet Jesus when are you going to give him a chance in your life? Now there was a group of, of, of young men and women that were, they were vibrant and they were so happy. And, and they used to congregate after church and have teas and cool drinks. And, and they used to make jokes with each other. So my, my, my idea of Christianity was, thank God, a good one. The little window I saw it through, it was a good one. I, I, I could look at their eyes. I could look at the, the, the way they communicated with one another. They loved one another. Remember, it was in the Brethren Church. And then I started thinking about this. The one part of me was pulled. No, don't give your life to God. And the other part was give your life to God. You know, there was a bad side and there was a good side of me. I didn't know it was the flesh and the spirit warring and fighting, you know, and, and, and um, uh, pulling. And then I decided, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. And then I did. I was 16 years old. Now I found myself in the Baptist church. This is after coming through the Anglican Church, to the Brethren Church, to Wayside Sunday School, and now I found myself introduced into the Baptist Church. So it all was on a Wednesday night, it was youth evening for them, and I found myself, I didn't plan it, but I found myself in front, and I was crying my heart out, and I gave my life to the Lord. Oh, it was so wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. That night, after I have given myself to God, obviously the service was a little bit longer, or, or the youth was a little bit longer, I got home and my dad nearly gave me a hiding. I was 16 years old, but I was his firstborn. So he was very precious, you know, about his girl. And I explained to them that I gave my life to the Lord. Now, that, now remember, they didn't go to church. They pushed me to go to youth and wherever. But because my dad was a drinker, and sometimes when he drank wine, he was in another state. So this night, he was in another state. He wasn't in the happy state, you know. And... Um, I was a bit sad that they never understood. But I was grateful that I've accepted Jesus into my life. And it was tough because my parents didn't, couldn't understand why am I wanting to go up to the house of the Lord all the time. And now suddenly I was walking with a Bible, I had a hop in my step and I was just happy. And then I came home and told them, Mom and Dad, I would love to be baptized. I'm going through the waters. What? That was a crazy idea. Because they were Anglican. My parents prepared me to go for confirmation. And here, I come home and tell them that I'm saved and that I want to go through the waters. Anyway, so my youth pastors, they came and they came and chatted with my parents. They just wouldn't understand but although it was a hard time for me because I was stopped from going to church, I would hang, um, um, I practically hang or hung out of the window. We stayed on the third floor. And every time when it was half past five on a Sunday or uh, half past seven on a Wednesday, I would hang out 
I don't know why I would hang out because the church I couldn't see from there. But it was just a part of me that was so hungry because I missed, I missed the people. And I wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. I still stayed close to Jesus. I read my Bible and I prayed. And then one evening my friend came and she asked my parents if I could go to a Sunday service with her. And they said yes. And this time it was all the Baptists coming together in Cape Town. And there I found myself again going out and committing my life to God. And that night, the lady that led me to the Lord, she didn't have a Bible. And the joke was, she said to me, my dog ate the Bible. My dog chewed the pages. Isn't that a laugh? But I was saved. I, with everything within me, I said, I am going to take Jesus into my life and I'm going to hold him and nobody was going to snatch him from me. And from then, something just happened. My parents, they stopped carrying on with me. But my mom joined me and went up with me to the house of the Lord. And when I got baptized, my mom was there. My dad wasn't there, but my mom was there. And through my little light, my mom came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I courted a few guys, friends. You, I had a happy life through God's grace. My steps were ordered by God since a very young girl, a young age. And then I asked the Lord to send me in because now I grew older. I would love to have a man of God, a man after God's own heart, a man that loves God more than me, a steadfast man. And then I met my husband. I didn't know he was my husband, but he introduced himself. He would love to be my prayer partner. And so for five years, we prayed together. He indeed was a noble guy. He kept to his promise. Excuse me, not five years. About Yes, we prayed right through our courtship. But in those years, we became girlfriend and boyfriend. And after that, we, um, uh, uh, we got betrothed, or as you call it, engaged. And then we got married. Now you must know, I have. And I had this intimate relationship with the Lord because my parents weren't saved. Uh, From the age of 16 that, uh, that I gave my life to the Lord. So the two of us, we had a journey. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we had this journey, this intimate journey. He had all my attention, you know. And when I caught it even so, I could give God all my attention. Because I was still single. I had a boyfriend, but I was still single. And when I got married, oh my goodness, I found myself in not such a happy space. I had the best husband ever that one could ask for. I had wonderful kids, first Lance and then Jamie. But there was an emptiness inside of me. And then I asked the Lord, What is this? Why is this emptiness inside of me? Where is this happiness that I had? Where is this intimacy? And then the Holy Spirit started ministering to me that indeed I had replaced him. I had replaced him for my husband and my children. And I could just fall on my knees and say, Oh, please forgive me. I miss you. I miss you so much now. Please give me another chance that I would find you and have intimacy with you. And you know what? When I started getting back to my intimacy level with the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, my life changed. I became so contented from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Every time I speak about this, It brings tears to my eyes because it's so easy to replace God. It's so easy to make him second best in our lives. 
I want you to take stock of your life today. Whether you are married, whether you are single, whether you are divorced, whether you are a widow, but you are a woman. Take stock of your life. Take stock of your intimate life with God. And be honest with yourself. And if you have replaced Him, if you, you have made Him second best, if you have put other things before Him, come back to Him. Come back to that intimate place with Him. When we are going to stand before the Lord, we cannot say it's because of this, it's because of him, it's because of her, it's because of that. And be turned away. I don't want to be turned away. I want to be at that banquet. I want to be with him forever. I want him to be first in my life, in everything. I want to walk in the total happiness of God. And so tonight I invite you. Today I invite you. Allow Father God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit to be number one in your life. And you will never be the same again. Don't replace him with anyone, for anyone or anything. Yes, you can have your boyfriend, your husband, your mom, your dad, your uncles, your aunt, your children. But him, they must be first in your life. Your intimacy with God. May the Lord richly bless you. And thank you that I could share with you my journey and my intimacy with the Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Heal City Youth Online. Please follow us on our social media platforms at Heal City Youth Cape Town on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and SoundCloud to see what's happening and access our content.